Ever had a project that was just determined to go wrong? I'm not talking about a complicated project here. I'm talking about a simple project that you thought would be easy. Well, this is that project. to build this awesome black pipe bookshelf, kind of industrial looking design, that would go between my fireplace and the wall. So I sat down with my woodworker's notebook and drew out some ideas I had, being sure to include as much detail as I could. Once I had my ideas kind of roughed out, I went to the store to buy all the black pipe and hardware I needed. This is where it started to go wrong. I had to go to the store no less than five times to get all the parts I needed. Between missing parts, stores not having the right parts in stock, ugh, it was freaking ridiculous. But I made it through and here's what I ended up with. I've got 18 three quarter inch elbows, six floor flanges, 18 10 inch pipe nipples, three eight inch pipe nipples, 15 six inch pipe nipples, and 15 three quarter inch pipe T fittings. Wait, that's the wrong size T fitting. Back to the store. Black pipe has wax and grease on it to keep it from rusting in the store. This needs to be removed before painting. To clean off the grease and wax from the pipe, I decided to use mineral spirits and an abrasive pad. After cleaning the grease off the pipe, I started to build these sub-assemblies. I needed three leg assemblies, 12 shelf support assemblies, and three return brackets. I painted each sub-assembly with two coats of flat black spray paint. I definitely do not recommend skipping this step. It really adds that nice professional touch and is quite frankly, a lot harder to do after the shelf is assembled. With everything painted, it was time to set those aside and start working on the shelves. I bought the wood I needed from a local guy that sells out of a storage unit nearby. This was the first issue. With only a limited amount of hickory left in stock, I accidentally bought an elm board. The second issue, once I mapped out where to cut the wood, I realized I had exactly enough wood to make the shelves. So I'd better not make any mistakes. Remember that piece of elm that I accidentally bought? It's getting used now. I ripped the rough lumber down on the bandsaw and then joined it plain and then ripped the boards on the table saw to their final width. The width of each board is gonna vary based on cutting around knots and other defects. I laid out all of my boards so that I could mix and match everything to get the best looking shelves possible and also kind of weave in that elm I talked about earlier so it wasn't quite as noticeable. Quick tip, to get a perfect edge joint, fold each joint together and run it back to the jointer or the table saw. This eliminates any inaccuracies with the table saw fence or the jointer fence and creates a perfectly parallel joint. Just check this out. In order to save some potential frustration, I used a biscuit joiner to cut biscuits into all of the boards. While biscuits don't add strength, they do help with alignment, ensuring that the boards don't slip around while they are being glued, causing an uneven surface that I would have to plane out later on. I glued each panel together, one at a time, because my neighbor didn't have very many clamps that I could steal. I mean, borrow. Once the glue dried, I scraped off the squeeze out with this fancy paint scraper. If you don't already have one of these, I'll put a link in the description down below so you can pick up your own. This is the best couple of bucks I spent this week. I ran each panel back through the planer, taking the smallest cut I possibly could, hoping that the panel would stay flat and not have too much tear out or God forbid, snipe. 
The final thickness was just over 5 eighths of an inch thick, which was a little thinner than I was hoping, but what was I gonna do? I then ripped the shelves down to their final width and then crosscut them to length using my crosscut sled on the table saw. I feel like every time I try a new finish, ah, uh, see those holes in that one panel? Yep, I drilled them wrong. I got so frustrated that I decided to move on and just work on the finishing instead. I'll get back to drilling the holes later. Anyway, I feel like every time I try a new finish, it becomes my new favorite finish. And this is no exception. I'm using a hard wax oil on these shelves and this stuff is really cool. All you have to do is wipe it on, let it soak in, and then wipe it right back off. It's on, wax off. The hard wax oil soaks into the wood and hardens instead of sitting on top like polyurethane. And it leaves this super nice kind of lustrous finish that just feels really good to the touch. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna try this out for yourself. With the finish done, I could finally drill the holes, again. I use a one and a 16th inch Forstner bit, which fits three quarter inch black pipe perfectly. If you decided to do this freehand just like me, make sure you check periodically to ensure the hole is being drilled perfectly straight. To help with assembling the shelf, I first bolted the foot assemblies to a 2x12 board to keep everything upright. This is a really important step because this bookshelf is not freestanding and bolting it to something while assembling all of the shelves makes the job a lot easier. I installed each shelf support through the wood shelf and turned it until it was tight. That is a tongue twister. Before moving it to the next level, I checked that everything was level. To fix any uneven shelf supports, I just had to rotate the assembly another turn until everything was perfect. Then I could continue this process up the bookshelf until I got to the top. While I thought that I was excited to build this bookshelf, my excitement was nothing compared to the dog and cat who were feeling exceptionally helpful. Or maybe they just liked being the center of attention. We may never know. Once I had all the shelves in place, I could put the last shelf on top of all the shelf supports and then add the three brackets that'll be used to attach the bookshelf to the wall. And another problem. I realized that the beadboard and the chair molding in my living room interfered with one of the shelves. So I had to install a plate to the wall that I could attach the bookshelf to. Like I said, this was the most complicated, simple project I've ever done. Before mounting the bookshelf to the wall, I double checked that the shelf was level and plumb. And then I could drive drywall screws into each of the support flanges at the wall. Quick tip, add some paste wax to your drywall screws to make them go in easier. With the bookshelf attached to the wall, I could then go back and double check that each of the shelf support arms were aligned. Since all the shelf supports are stuck together, I had to fight with them a little bit. But after a little bit of effort, I was able to get all of the shelf supports aligned. I really love how this project turned out. If you want to build your own bookshelf, I have plans in the description down below. So make sure you check those out. These are full colored, super detailed, step-by-step -step plans. So you can avoid all of the issues and pitfalls that I ran into during my build. 